Hi, everybody. This is Lance from datatraders.com. And here we're be speaking with Ed and Brian from Contemporary Wealth Management. How are you guys doing today? Good over yourself. Good. Great. Thanks, Lance. I'm doing great. So I'm doing great as well. So I wanted to set up this interview just for other members on both of our YouTube channels to get to know a little bit more about us, what type of trades we do. And I actually reached out to both of you guys because um, I'm taught to many different services out there. And I have to honestly say you guys are two of the most, maybe the most ethical and educational members out there. So I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Thank, you. The Thank you, Lance. Very nice of you. Yeah, no problem. So um, First, let's just give a quick overview of what what is some of your background in trading and investing and whatnot. Ed, do you want to go first on that? Sure. Well, I'm in my early 60s. I've got a multi-decade experience with the market. Started really in my teens when I actually traded an ounce of gold during the time when gold was going crazy. It kind of gave me the bug. And then, you know, I was in school and working poor for a long, long time. But I was in the insurance uh, business early on in the early 80s. In 1987, I uh, obtained my Series 7 license through one of my life insurance companies and did both of those for a while. Sold that agency in the late 90s and went into brokerage exclusively and then went into brokerage management. And then I managed a day trading room for uh, a couple of years. Market crashed and that kind of wiped that out. Um, and then I wrote market commentary for a financial website for a few years, which also became defunct because of the, the lengthening bear market. And all that was kind of surrounding the dot-com, the first 1.0, dot-com 1.0, the first wave of, of the internet. And um, was trading my own account all that time, very big in fixed income. Started out early, you know, in the early 80s, I was, again, very poor and as soon as I started making some money, I'd put 100 then 300 then I got up to like $900 a month plowing into mutual funds every month, year after year after year after year for like almost 20 years. So um, that's basically my savings and, and, and wealth growth phase. And then I was trading the account all that while. So in the 2000s, again, big and fixed income, had a trading account and those things together kind of got me. All my fixed income revenue, I would reinvest into mutual funds or individual stocks. So I always had that conservative tilt where I wanted my money safe. And then I used the earnings and my my earnings and the income stream off of it to buttress the savings plan long-term. Uh, went through the 2008 crash, heavy in fixed income, not so heavy in the market, but I did get some sting in the market. Uh, some things I stopped out of, some things I rode to the bottom. And then my bigger problem was my fixed income was all getting called or matured and rates were at zero. So I've kind of started deploying a lot of assets into the depressed real estate market, which I'm just now getting out of in the last few years and uh, using the strategies that we all use. Uh, we're trying to conservatively deploy money into the markets to generate either growth or income, You know, whether you're using your revenue for growth of your portfolio by reinvesting it or using it as income to you know supplement your lifestyle, which I'm doing at my stage. It's all similar strategies going on. So, and, and, you know, a lot of what I do is in fixed income with some conservative, relatively conservative option allocations where I'm not too levered up in my account typically at all. So, uh, and I shoot for relatively modest returns of somewhere in the eight to 12 or 15% range, depending on which account I'm dealing with. And, and you know, so that's my deal. Uh, let me add this one in because I am the middle aged one and a good little flow there. You said you started in 1987 or so, right? Yeah. So I was just six years old then, and my wife, not my, my mom actually worked for Con Edison. Back in 87, she could buy shares of ED stock for no commissions. And you're probably aware commissions were crazy back then. They so, were crazy. So she got, she was able to get no commissions for me, and I was buying Ed shares when I was. Yeah, six years old. Speaking of Ed, right? I, I <laughs> so, love that. And reinvesting the dividends all her match. Yeah. She's been doing that since the mid-80s, and she lives off the Ed pension and dividends. It's amazing. Right. And, uh, That's awesome. We also have a we also have another similar lifestyle as well, because um when I graduated from college, I did do some financial advising, worked at Ameriprise Financial, and we would recommend the super high five percent load mutual funds with the variable universal life insurance policies that would pay a lot for us, but wouldn't be very good for members. And I would just keep arguing like that's not really good for them. 
do a 30 year term policy, much cheaper. And I had to get out, out from there. It, it's to a be hard a, business, Lance. To, it's hard. Like, it, like, obviously, business, you're really not always doing the best thing for your customer, but we won't go there too much. Yeah. I mean, you have to make a living and obviously you want to do what's best for your client, yeah. but it's hard also to be yeah. a fiduciary to do it right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I decided to be a teacher at that point, but I did take my series seven. I knew all about options where based on the textbook definitions of all in a put was, but I didn't really do anything with it. I was very similar to you, buy and hold investor for many years from around 2005 or six, all the way to now, pretty much Roth IRA every year, just maxing that out. And then mid to 2015s or so, looked at Tasty Trade, looked at options starting at relatively popular. And I kept it very conservative like you. I would do conservative covered calls. You know, you buy a stock at $50 a share, sell a $60 call against it. And pretty relatively safe way and conservative way to go about things. And also another thing that I noticed when you're seeing all these high levered buying options that are way out of the money, Options don't necessarily have to be very aggressive. You can do them with a much more conservative output if you know what you're doing. So went that route, went to cash secured puts for trying to get better entry, better cost basis on stocks. Went into futures about three, three and a half years ago and pretty much keep going from there. Uh, Brian, you want to tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, tell about it. I started my futures two years ago was actually something he posted on Facebook. It was about your... Uh, Five Delta, 30 day uh, the expiration, um, just blog you posted and that got me attention. I started asking you questions privately right. through Facebook Messenger and you spent hours and hours with me. And I think uh, at the time I, I was using Schwab and I ended up going to Tasty Trade and making an account there. And I started doing exactly what you know you, you posted about that. Uh, you know, from there I kind of found Bobby and uh, Trader Nerds and you know, kind of learned about the one one twos and stuff like that. But even before that, I started kind of with you around 06. Uh, you know, I got into uh, the the union and uh, I started putting money into a 401. Well, it's an annuity, but it's like 401k and just kept compounding the money. You know, it's an 08 happened like we all talked about. And, you know, we didn't have much money. You know, I put in, you know, a few thousand dollars a year for this first couple of years in apprenticeship. And, you know, I, I saw it go down, but I know the extent of it, what people lost at the time. And, Mm -hmm. I kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. So, you know, what, 17 years later. So uh, we're still doing it. And that's still kind of my base. So, you know, I do these options, you know, portion of the account, you know, try to target what 24% or so, uh, which is pretty aggressive. But, you know, my, my buy and hold, you know, we're, we're trying to hit 10 to 12%. I think that's what we're all trying to target with it. And that's kind of where my calm is. That's my chi. That's more, I kind of go back with my investing is always back to my buy and hold. So, a lot of this option stuff's great, you know. I'm kind of, you know, for sure with the options wise, I'm very uh, green compared to you too. But, uh, you know, learn a lot from you, Lance, and many others. Uh, you know, I kind of built on where we're at. So, you know, I had almost two decades worth of market knowledge built being built by watching these buy and holds. So, you know, even though I'm green with the options, I kind of know how markets in my head, you know, kind of just kind of work. Not to kind of get into the FOMO where you're buying hot, you know. Like, I try to stay grounded. So. Like I said, two years into it, I still feel like I have a decent, you know, mindset with options. And that's kind of how I think I kind of adapted to where we're at now. So, yeah, I'm kind of the baby. I was born, what, 88. So about a year mm -hmm. after, you know, Ed did all his fun stuff. So, uh, but that's, you know, kind of what makes him and I, you know, a little different. So, uh, you know, he does, you know, his, he's living on his money and I'm still trying to grow mine. So that's kind of a good little mixture. Yeah, we all have a very... Great... Pretty wide, diverse uh, background in terms of where we started, where we are yeah. now, and who knows where we'll be in the future. But I think all of us could agree that there, we're we're all lifelong learners, and we want to be able to absolutely every day. Where we're going. Yeah. So, next question I want to ask you guys, and we pretty much have similar answers, I think. Or what do you think is your favorite like current trading strategy? And a quick elaboration on why. Uh, Ed, if you want to go first, sure. Well. Um... Basically, what I do is I take the bulk of my assets and put those into fixed income, either T-bills or T-bill ETFs. And then uh, for those that are familiar with that, that throws off excess margin or buying power that I then use to sell puts in things like SPY and IWM, uh, some individual stocks or ETFs, that type of thing. Uh, and I usually allocate a percentage of the portfolio into each strategy. 
And so that enables me to have the income off the fixed, the, the income stream off of the fixed income, uh, where I'm laddered all the way from T-bill ETFs all the way out to about three years right now. And I have that revenue coming in. And then, you know, I do a little spot campaign. I do a little IWM campaign. I do some, some commodity trading, which needs cash. So I have to leave some cash aside for that. But it's the stacking of these little uh, components into one big strategy so that, that together it produces a return that I'm trying to target. Yeah, that's an interesting way to go, looking at your fixed income that comes in and then using that to make it grow. It's definitely something that I want to consider as well. Um, Brian, you want to answer that next question too, your favorite trading strategy? Right? Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I'm talking, what, about 2% a month, but, you know, it's, it's all mechanical. You know, we're kind of all adapted to that, you know, mechanical strategy. So, uh, you know, my fixed income, I put, what, 50% of my, you know, net lick and bill in my options account. And the rest of it pretty much just when a day comes up, I'm putting a trade on, you know, and then I put my profit target on there, let it come off. So, you know, right now I'm trading one, one, one. So I was trading one, one, twos for last two and a half years or so. Uh, in the last few months, you know, I'm sure people watch the video, you know, they're out there. Uh, yeah, I kind of, I'm, I'm seeing the one, one, one being a little bit better. So the last part of a month and a half, two months, I'm kind of transitioning back to one, one, ones and uh, going back to even more basic, you know, uh, you know, sticking just even with the short puts, you know, uh, I noticed I can get my leverage down a little bit, whereas before I was running pretty leveraged. And we still are, you know, when you think about what we are still, you know, to collect even a 2% return, uh, you know, it's still pretty highly leveraged. But, you know, even just down with short puts uh, as a standalone trade, uh, it seems like I can get some of my, my risk down in, in certain areas. So, you know, I'm actually pretty basic with my trading, uh, you know, just pretty much two trades a month in one account. You know, I, I have, I think that's, I have a smaller $24,000 account trade and, and I think I put four trades on, not counting my weekly hedges. So it's pretty basic and boring, but that's kind of, again, you know, going back to the buying holds uh, where I like to be, because, you know, I have a day job, you have, you know, we, we work. So uh, trying to run a discord, have a day job, kids, uh, I sure. think simplicity for me is the way to go. So I can't really be a huge trader and still do everything else. So, uh, me, myself, I try to keep it extremely basic. How about yourself? Yeah, good point. Um, I actually want to preface what I'm about to say with Ed was the person that taught me about Bill and using that span margin in a different light than I was even aware yeah, of. So many people we did talk that to. Yeah, a lot of us weren't even yeah. aware of it. I really appreciate you telling us that one. Thank and, you. It's, it's and um, some of that is... Itself. Go ahead, sir. I was just going to say that's been quite a journey in and of itself. My whole rolling out the T-bill thing and the all that to everyone. It's it's it was intuitive to me because I lived it before the crash when you yeah. guys were like much much younger, and even people my age for the most part didn't have the wealth accumulated to have a lot of it in fixed income. Everyone had everything in equities, so it just it. Just a different dynamic that kind of uh, I know other people have my this knowledge I have in my head, but in our, in our world, uh, it's not super common. So it really has been fun rolling it out to people. Yeah, yeah it's my yeah. deep bills and stuff. You know, Lance and I were we're long the market, so when we heard you know rising interest rates, we're encouraging. <laughs> you know, and yeah, I've been talking to Ed for years now, and I see interest rates going up. His little fingers start going all up. He's getting all excited. So <laughs> it's funny how, you know, different people, different traders, you know, I'm long the market all the time. So, uh, you know, when I hear interest rates going up and, you know, inflationary period, it mm -hmm. kind of gets me a little nervous for him. He knows his T-bills are going to be going through the roof, and he's going to be making a nice chunk of his change where he likes right. to do his fixed income. So it's, it's to me, pretty funny uh, watching him. It was interesting. I think it was around five, six months ago where uh, people in the YouTube space weren't be aware of it because it was literally just us three talking about it. But we were trying to figure out an ideal amount of bill you could buy off a of futures. Oh, yeah. And we learned the hard way by having to pay a little bit of interest. On yeah. The side. Pennies <laughs> here, pennies there, but they add up at the end of the month when you think about, you know, your... Uh, how, it's, you worth know, learning. it's worth learning because you can learn where your account can go right up to the edge. And then, okay, you incur a little margin interest, you learn, and then you're good to go for the rest of your life. Like you yeah. guys will never incur a margin situation because of your T-bill ETF allocation. So, I mean, like, it's just something you have a little learning curve and then it yeah. just pays for, and regardless, you know, people are saying, oh, rates are going to go back to 2%. Rates it's are not going to go back to 2% unless we have a horrific recession and the Fed has to cut there. The World Banks don't want rates to go way back 
uh, that low down. And really, neither do savers. It's really not fair uh, to the savings. I hate to say fair. But, uh, the past 15 years prior to this rate increase has really been a boon to uh, debtors and a big penalty to savers. So um, you, know, you guys' parents have been penalized for the last 15 years by not earning anything on their fixed income. So it's a tough situation. But uh, no matter what, what, even if you're earning 2 or 3% on your UT bill allocation, it's still extra money that you would not be earning anything on otherwise because you need it for your trading purposes uh, right. and cash for it. So, um, yeah, going with that, it's like a big puzzle that we were trying to solve because I noticed, okay, if I add a little bit more bill, it's going to start charging interest. And I was telling Ed at the time, this is just another puzzle, just like all the things we're doing for our <laughs> all our different trading strategies. Like, and we I love like, it. It's the best part. Like, we had, it it. sounds like a terrible thing, but we like trying to crack it, you know. <laughs> it was always, it's always fun. Right. So I mean, We have some usually that works, but we're always trying to look for something different because that's just how we're wired, you know, like – yeah. You know, but it's good. That's how we're adapting. I think every every month, every week, you know, every week or month in the year. Yeah. We're, look back where we were just two years ago and the knowledge we're building with different things. It's, it's pretty wild. It's, and it's, then it's, these discords where we are, um, it's such a learning opportunity because we can share our knowledge. We can learn from others. Helping other people kind of helps us to some extent. It reinforces what we know. And it, it, it's almost information seepage in and then some release of that back. So uh, just running into everyone and watching what everyone's doing, it's great to, to take in their experience and to learn from others' success and failures. It's very mm -hmm. easy to learn from other people's, again, success and failures because the failure part is really what I prefer to, to learn from because it avoids me from losing money. I can figure right. out ways to yeah. earn it. I just want to learn how to avoid losing it. So it, yeah. it's interesting to watch. And, um, you know, I, I would say that, you know, like regarding new traders, uh, that's one of the mistakes I think that I see the most with new traders is that they're in a hurry they want to hurry and hurry and make the money and and they don't realize that there's a huge learning curve to all this you're almost learning a new language in fact you really are learning a new a language and it's got an unlimited vocabulary so uh we all have a limited lifespan but the markets will go on after us and if we screw up the market has a lot more longevity than our bank accounts do so it's important That's to true. uh you know, take this thing. There's always somebody away. on the other side of our losses is what you're trying to say. Always yeah. somebody on the other side of our losses. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It sees what we don't see. That's what we got to try to figure out every day, you know, how to prevent yeah. getting that money up. There's no, uh, no quick avenue from hard work on my discord today. I was raking leaves nonstop for like two weeks, I have a big Oak tree and I have like seven big bags of leaves that I have to put out. And then I just told the group, you got to put in the work. <laughs> <laughs> That's your easy answer. Yeah. Um, some of the That's learning true. mistakes I've noticed and I've done myself because no one's perfect. Um, one of the things that I've been doing, especially four or five years ago when the meme stocks were running high, I would still do my cash grid puts, but I'd still go really far out of the money. But there were stocks that I didn't really want to own. And of course, I was eventually taken in on those. And then the stocks went to nothing and I couldn't make anything on the call side. So that was definitely pretty rough at the time. And then I pretty much realized I don't want to do that type of stuff anymore. So yeah. um I still see members all the time getting very tempted by these really high premiums. How could I make my 20% a month? Oh, I could sell yeah. that on super high VCD stocks. Yeah. And one of the things that I notice that a lot of members do is if a trade that we know after a lot of experience is a pretty risky trade, but it happens to work, that's just like playing the casino is probably the worst thing that could ever happen to somebody if you actually win on those first few that are just right. nuts. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. That's what scares me. You know, last, what, since November, the market's rolling up, I guess. Uh, a lot of new traders coming into here, seeing uh, up, up, and away. What are we up? 20-some percent probably since November. And uh, to me, that's kind of scary. You know, it's kind of, you know, you, you hear all my videos, our videos, and it's kind of like putting fear into people. But it's, I think, helping them. I think hopefully one day it's going to help people, you know, like, because, uh, again, you can get really blinded by what you're seeing with these markets, you know, being up, what, 7% year-to-date just this year. Um, it's pretty well, so.
Yeah, what, yeah, what you're trading you. and how much of it you're trading is what, you know, people, you almost have to go through a few cycles to understand what that really means. And it's hard to explain to people. And it's really hard to explain to people when they really don't want to hear it. They just want to hurt no. money. Yeah, but it seems like you work with more and more people. You know, they start coming around. They start seeing it. The yeah. best thing is they can do is show people facts. If, if you show what you're seeing, not just you can tell anybody something, but once you start showing, you know, like test things, live test things, I mean, it, it, you, people have no choice but to start buying into it. At least, and, you know, I think we all operate under that principle that we want to educate people. Yeah, and people are going to do what people want to do. We can't stop them from. You know, we all have different temperaments. I'm way on the conservative side. Others are more on the aggressive side. Yeah. Uh, we don't really want to tell, and I'm, I don't want to speak for you, Lance, but I know, and I, but I, I think this is true. I think we're out there to educate and offer, uh, uh, I hate to say options, choices, and, and the different angles of what is going on, and then hope that our, our, our the clientele and the people we're interacting with quote, do the right thing even for them. In other words, make a trading plan, follow the trading plan, decide what you want to trade and don't be chasing every shiny object all over the place, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's just a matter of educating people. And then we've done our job, basically. And it's an ongoing education process. I think every wow. day we wake up, I mean, Lance, you're teaching kids. You're also teaching your, your uh, Discord group, which you know is fairly extensive. And you know you're you're cranking out trades and looking for opportunities. It's it's a lot to to present out there. You do educational videos, um, and it's just um, uh, that's I think the foundation of what we're all doing is education of 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 people, so we can all be better for it. Yeah. Definitely agree. I had someone today. I put on a hedge. It was a ninety day put debit spread on ES. Uh, used about half a percent of my net lick. And then someone, a pretty new member of my group said, what should I do? I'm like, I don't know what you should do. Yeah. What's your, what's your account telling you? Yeah. It's like, I, I don't know what your thought process is. What are your mm. risk return preferences? And what are you trying to make for your goals? Because he was a pretty new member as well. Yeah. And like, other members that I've known for years, like I could give them a little bit of at least thought process behind it, but right. I'm never going to tell anyone they should do anything because yeah. it's all based on their own personal preferences. And right. Right. And, and yeah, we're not and advisors. We're educators. But I think you know. I think we all agree is we show what we're doing because we feel that that is pretty much one of the most optimal things that that could help with our possible returns based on the amount of risk we have, and then people could learn from that. They're yeah. not necessarily so well, they, can, they can pick away from you. They can pick away from me. They can pick some from Ed, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing everybody picking a little bit of from everybody and kind of building their own. You know what they think is the most ideal. You know I haven't really okay. seen anybody train the same stuff. I mean we're all kind of train similar trades, but different sizing, you know, it's huge. You just different sizing means that the change, it could, you know, better or worse, you know, right. and we all kind of get a little bit of feedback from everybody and we, we kind of make our own, uh, you know, decipher it differently. And that's the wild part about it. We're all trading similar right. stuff, but it's like you, you said it many times, you know, we're all trading similar con, you know, we're all selling premium usually, you know, some are buying it, but uh, you know, there's only so many ways to do it, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, there's really no right or wrong way. I don't think. Yeah, that's one of the key things here because I have so many members that are doing their own things and some people know that they're going for much higher returns than I'm trying to get. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. As long as they're aware of what the risks are. Yeah. That's, I guess, the main thing that we had to mention is, sure, they could see a trade that might make a ton of money, but they need to be aware of what the risks are mm -hmm. in terms of blowing up as well. So what are some ways that both of you guys work on helping others that have made a mistake in other members' viewpoints? In terms of what they did, you know, do you want to go first on that? Then you can take it. Yeah, I, I think it's just trying to guide people. Again, number one, globally, broadly speaking, go slow. Realize you're on a multi-month and really a multi-year learning journey. I mean, optimally, someone should come in and um, spend a month or two just trying to assimilate the information. Maybe do a little paper trading, write down some trades track them in a spreadsheet if they're so inclined and, and pick a spot. Okay, I shorted this here. I bought that there. I did this here. and just see how it goes and then use that data to kind of formulate where they want to go, how they want to approach the market and maybe get some reality on what can happen when things uh, 
go go happen either the market ripping higher or crashing down and you entering too many positions too quickly into that and it reverses and goes the other way etc cetera, etc cetera. i think we all believe in trading plans um but a lot of people don't want to deal with trading plans so a lot of people really just want to be shown what to do like this is what we're doing so they're going to automatically do it even if they have no idea what they're doing so Again, I encourage people to think long term because short term, you will get stung if you're not patient as you enter this new area. Just the same, you know, and I'm talking new area, the futures and options world, just the same as if you start trading stock. You know, you, you can go with a, a nice blue chip and buy a share or two, or you can go buy that $2 stock and buy a whole bunch of it and shoot your whole bank account at that thing, thinking, oh, I'm going to find the next Amazon. And you're going to find yourself with, you know, usually 99% of the time with a, a stock that's worth two pennies. So yeah. um, it, it's hard to to, to um, do that. It's really hard to say exactly what I do. But broadly speaking, go slow, realizing you are learning a completely new thing in your life. It's exciting. It's thrilling. But the mistakes are more prevalent than are our savings and bank accounts. So go slow and protect that capital as you learn. And every three, I encourage people like every three months, look back where you were three months ago. Yeah. And when you can look you back can three months ago, when you can yeah. look back three months ago and say, well, I really didn't learn that much in the last three months. One, either you've learned everything you need to trade the way you want to, or two, you just haven't experienced enough in the market to realize there's more to learn. I agree. Brian, yeah, like, you wanna... I mean, I think it, Pretty much touched on everything you know uh i think you're, you're until you get burned a little bit you know that's the, the, the only way i think you know is, is to learn you and you know, i can sit here and tell you the risks until you kind of see them yeah i think that's gonna be that's where i learned my most i mean i'm a i'm a visual learner so i had to visually see my account go down last march you know 18 percent from peak to trough and that kind of whenever i started you know adapting from there saying i gotta take a little bit less risk because again i had to go through that little you know, March debacle where, you know, again, I went from being up 14% down 14, 4%. So, uh, again, I think that's kind of what I tell people. Like, I can sit here until I'm blue in the face and tell people the risks. Uh, you know, I, the best thing is either have them kind of see a little bit of it if they can't see, all, you know, what I'm presenting. Uh, but, you know, pretty much show facts and then say, hopefully the next drawdown is a minor one, uh, just enough to open up some eyes. So, uh, again, I try, you know, we, we try every day to, to yep. steer people the right way but uh until i think we see it uh, people don't really buy into it me included you know i'm not saying every it's kind of a cloud of the human nature uh mm -hmm. you know and you see a lot of flashy stuff going on right now it's very hard including for myself to pump the brakes and you know uh really slow down from there so yeah just i think mine is going through the processes and whenever you see these things they're like okay you know ed lance and brian said this you know like they said it was going to happen. Now it's okay. Let's listen. I think, you know, that's going to be the best way. So how about yourself? Yeah, the, I agree with what both of you guys are saying, um, especially Ed, when you're saying it is a learning process. And I'm seeing a lot of my Discord members aren't really treating it too much as a learning process. I'm definitely not saying everybody, but there's a decent amount of people that are like, okay, what did Lance get in on this trade? And then I literally had people say, it was an MES 112 trade. And then I got, you know, 19 premium. Someone was like, should I take it for 1880? Right. Like, we're, we're literally talking a few dollars. Yeah. And they're, and they're wondering about it. I mean, the whole point is not just to mimic exactly what I do. And right. then if you get it, and is it worth it to yeah. not make extra dollars? Like one, in the end, it won't make much of a difference either way. It all averages out. Sometimes they'll get higher fills, sometimes lower fills. But oh, yeah. it's, it's more of a bigger picture. Like, why are you actually taking this trade? Just because I did? Or right. is, do you have the exact reason why we're doing this? I learned why, yeah. And you have people that are trying to study everything you do. And there's other people that just want to be spin fed. That's, you know, kind of what we're here for. People, Some people want it. So I mean, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. But at the same time, uh, if you don't know why you're getting into it, and you get into it a couple of days late, and you might be already too late. And hopefully, uh, you know, you do your own studying. But if you don't, right. uh, you know, that's why, I don't know, it's, it's hard giving these trades out. You know, I gave what a uh, corn one uh, on Friday, and you know, corn kind of rebounded. I look like a rock star. I, I did one tranche. I, I think I'm up seventy bucks on it. But 
you know, I, I'm afraid that people are going to look at that next time I put a trade and they're going to follow me and everything and they're going to make, you know, 50% in three days. That's not I got lucky. Not lucky. I mean, it's a little bit of TNA on, you know, technical analysis on it, but at the same time, uh, I hope people don't say, okay, well, I didn't follow Brian into the last trade and he, you know, killed it. And it's not going to happen every time. You know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. So, Brian, you're not saying that you're a quote unquote guru like everybody else wants no, to <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, that's, that's the last thing I'm going to say because that's whenever I get burnt, you know. The most I the most I do is an emoji of sunglasses. That's right. That's as far as I'll go. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, you can think I'm a guru or not, but it's okay. Um, last quick thing. Um, what are some of the ways that you might be able to help out other members in your groups? I know we did talk about that a bit. If you want to just tell a little bit about your service and how you can help out others. You guys could go first. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, Brian and I started Contemporary Wealth Management. It is on the Discord platform, which is similar to Slack. It's just one of these chat community uh, platforms. And um, we both came from uh, other Discords where we were moderators, you know, and did that for a few years. And again, we met in one of these Discords, interacted a lot, and decided eventually we wanted to do our own thing. And so we're at Contemporary Wealth Management on the Discord platform. I think there'll be some link information in this video uh, on our Discord, as well as probably our individual email addresses. If people want to email us and ask questions, we're more than happy to, to uh, interact with people. Uh, Lance, like you, we also have YouTube uh, videos that we produce. So people can look for those in the YouTube world under Contemporary Wealth Management and like and subscribe to our videos, just like they can to your Theta Trader, uh, Theta Traders videos as well. And uh, so those are pretty much the avenues where we can be reached. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely post these on each other's YouTube with each other's Discord. So any members that watch either my channel or your channel could easily reach either of us. Um, Brian, you want to add anything else? Yeah, just, you know, about what we're going to do is, you know, again, just, uh, you know, you you asked what we kind of teach. So, we, you know, like you, we kind of go over everything, you know, buying holes and um, the option stuff. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't really have much more at all, you know, add to that. Right. Yeah. yeah, in the end, I think we have pretty similar services. Like we're right. saying we're, we're making trades based on what we think is best. Other members could take them as a learning experience, hopefully, and then try to tweak it to their own regard. Um, some of the best questions that I get, um, either one-on-one -on -one or in the group are, you know, I see the trade that you did here. What do you think about tweaking it so-and-so? You know, maybe a little bit less DTE or a little bit higher delta. And then we look at the possible risks return, the goods and bads, and then make it more of a learning conversation there over anything, so. Yeah, I like any, any other last words, guys? I like your distribution curve that's behind you over here. Yeah, right shoulder. yeah, I am here. We're at the third standard deviation, maybe like touching on the third. <laughs> I think it's more of like a you know, you are special type person, like, don't think that you are not in the normal. But I'm mostly thinking of I like to sell low delta, and that's why I got the poster, and no really <laughs> other reason behind it. <laughs> so <laughs> All right, great. Well, it has been great talking to you guys, Brian and Ed. Again, if you look in the links, link in the description down below, either my channel or their channel, or you could say your channel and my channel, depending yeah. on what you're all, all, all of the above. And Lance, thank you for this uh, gathering and, and the idea of getting us all together. We appreciate it. Yes, it was thank great you. Guys, I, I think in the next few months or so, let people sink it in. We could do another one, maybe a little bit more deep dive into the first strategies we do. Sounds All right, nice. guys. Have a good rest of the evening. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. you. guys, too. Thanks. Bye, guys. I guess you could unrecord. Uh, I mean